Hello and welcome to my channel, On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And today, let's find out what's on the hook. Today is January 7, 2022. Oh, we made it to the new year. I'm so excited. I hope you had a great happy new year and some sort of celebration or just watching the ball drop or going to bed early, whatever it was. I hope you enjoyed your New Year's Eve celebration. And now that we're in the new year, it's time to make some resolutions and things that you might want to do this year and I'm going to be thinking about that myself but I'm not going to put anything carved in stone as they say because I am all over the place and so some of my New Year's resolutions don't work out so I'm just going to have a great 2022 that's my resolution and I hope you do the same on today's show, I'm going to wrap up the Christmas season. One way I'm going to wrap it up is to take you on a little tour of my house. Not too much, but just the Christmas tree to show you how we celebrated Christmas. And over to the Three Kings. And everybody's been asking me about the Three Kings that I painted, I don't know, five or six years ago. And they've been hanging on my stairwell for five or six years. They've been there for a long time. We leave them up to remind us of a beautiful Feast of Epiphany. And that's one of my favorite feasts of the whole year, Epiphany, which is the day that the, the kings, and some people say more than three, some people say three, so I painted three, but the day that the kings came to visit Jesus as an infant, and they recognized him as the child of God. And so that was their Epiphany, and they went back and told their people, the Gentiles, all about it. So that was kind of what... Epiphany is on the church calendar, but it's also the beginning of a new year. The new year has just begun, so I'm excited. It's 2022. Let's turn that page. Let's um, move along and have a great year this year. Now, since we're moving ahead, I've had Christmas in my rearview mirror, but first of all, I want to give away that beautiful floral prism throw from Mary Max. I'm not sponsored. But I, I bought this myself and I wanted to offer it as a giveaway for my uh, subscribers in the new year. And so on the Feast of Epiphany, I had plans to do that yesterday, but I was on the road. I was on a trip and I was driving home and I just ran out of steam. I thought, you know, I'm just going to do this on Friday and that way it'll be everybody will have all the time in the world to sign up for this giveaway. So I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But first of all, let's take a tour of the house and not too much, but just a little tour showing the three kings and that I painted, I actually painted these and people have been asking me to show them. So I'm showing them today on the day after the Feast of Epiphany and then a couple of other things as well. So my tree and some embroidery, things like that, that I put out at Christmas time. So let's take a look at that and then we'll move on. Whoops, see here are all the presents that aren't here anymore. We've all wrapped those up. And I just wanted to show you my tree. Um, we had a new dog in the family and I had to redo my bee. I didn't redo these right here. <laughs> They're supposed to hang down like these up here, but I did use beads. Someone asked me that. I use cardinals that you clip on right there. I used beads and I made some of these little baubles that I sent y'all a pattern for right there. There's a blue one. He looks cute sitting there. And I think there's another one around here as well. I have a few little ornaments here and there. I don't have a lot of ornaments. I've kind of tried to clean things out a little bit. Where is that other bauble? There he is. There's a bauble right there. And that was done in red and white. Yeah, it's one of my favorites because it goes with the tree a little bit. There's a cardinal sitting there and lots of little lights and beads. And that's how I decorated my tree this year. Next year, I'll probably have a lot more of these um, baubles on there and just in different places. And I'll show you in a minute the yarn that I'm going to use for those. So let's skip over here to another part of my Christmas decor. I love, love, love <laughs> this pillow. This was given to me by one of my close friends. She's so sweet and she thought of us, all three of the other of us <laughs> got one of these pillows as well. And I love the 1950s artwork. I think that is so gorgeous. It's the old Santa with the pink cheeks right there. See those beautiful pink cheeks and that twinkle in his eye. He's winking at the, at the observer. And I just really think that's a beautiful pillow. And that will come out again next Christmas.
as promised, as promised, these are the three kings for Epiphany right here. There's the king with the gold uh, gift and the incense and the frankincense and myrrh, excuse me, uh, on the end. I, I, I think that's how it goes, but I just, uh, this is a very whimsical look at the three kings. Whimsical, look at their faces. They're very, very whimsical. Their hands are very tiny. See their hands right there. Their little hands are very tiny right there. And so that makes it a little bit whimsical. I dress them in different colors so they'd be colorful for my walls. And these stay up over my staircase. They stay up all year long. So as a reminder of Epiphany, one of my favorite, favorite feast days on the church calendar. So there's a look at my three kings on the stairwell. I hope y'all enjoyed that. This is an embroidery piece that I did last year. I did a video about it, a couple videos actually. Um, it's, it's kind of an old fashioned picture of all the pieces of Christmas. There's the Christmas tree and the creche there, uh, Santa and his sleigh and all kinds of things on here to look at. It says joy to you and yours. And this is one of my favorite embroidery pieces, but it only comes out at Christmas and I hang it here right by my kitchen. And there's my kitchen right there. So I hang it right here to remind me that I did do some embroidery work that had to do with Christmas. So I hang it up every year and this is year number two. So next year it will come out at Christmas time as well. I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a little piece of the on the hook house at Christmas and those decorations will come down probably this afternoon and we will move on with 2022. Now, I want to introduce a little video clip of the Advent calendar as it was all opened, and this is from Elliot Craft House Magic. Wanted you to see it after I rolled up all of the beautiful balls of yarn, and they will be baubles on my tree this coming year. That's my plan, to use that yarn to make baubles for my tree. So let's take a look at this beautiful Advent calendar now that it's all opened up. Here's a look at my advent calendar I ordered from Ellie at Craft House Magic and this year her theme was Starlight Wishes. Some of you have already seen this but I wanted to show you the final look at all 12 of the colors of yarn and I'm going to put that right there but this came with the with the package and here are all the different colors of yarn and next year I plan to use these to make baubles for my tree and then I'll add some other colors with those as well or I may just make the baubles out of these solid colors and it will go a lot faster rather than changing colors. You can do it either way. If you have a beautiful yarn like this one, it's one of my favorites. If you have a yarn like this that changes color quite a bit, then you can make a bobble with that and it'd be quite beautiful. You don't have to change uh, colors like from red to blue to green to yellow. This all this has the colors in it that, you, that will just automatically change. So as you know, when you use a variegated yarn, that's what happens. And you can use one of these for a bobble, and I think it would probably make one full bobble and have some left over as well. And this is a little bit of her fingering yarn that came um, as you first opened the box. This is too tiny for me, <laughs> but, but I do love the color. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just kind of a, a yellow with black specks. I really like that. And um, I wouldn't mind having some of this in a worsted or a DK. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you that. That came on the first day and then of course one of the other colors as well and then on the last day Ellie sent a lavender sachet it smells so good see smell that <laughs> I'm kidding this is smells wonderful and she makes these by uh, with her machine and you can see how she's made these all around very cute and that will go <clears throat> in my uh, one of my clothing drawers right there but I just wanted to show you these beautiful beautiful yarns look at this Gorgeous, beautiful yarns. Let me move this out of the way here. Beautiful yarns. There's her business card right there. It's Craft House Magic. I'm not sponsored by Craft House Magic, but I did want to show you this. And also, it came with three stitch markers. Look how cute. That's a bell, a star, and a shooting star. And that's the theme of her advent calendar this year. I think she 
probably um, advertises these around May or June, and you can sign up for one. I'm not sure what month it will be, but I'll let you know. Again, I'm not sponsored by Craft House Magic, but I do love this advent calendar. Very beautiful. 12 days of Christmas yarn. Now I have one more little video clip of my diamond painting progress on Virgin of the Lilies. This is an 80 by 120 centimeter painting and a diamond painting. And let me see how much that is in inches. It's 31 and a half by 47. Um, 0.2 inches so it's really really big it's, it's almost three feet by four feet <laughs> it's four feet long by three feet wide and I want to show you the progress that I've made so I've opened it out onto the floor in my studio here and I wanted to show you the progress that I've made the first part of my diamond painting video I want to show you how I have this set up on a table and the table is just a small table it looks like about a five by two and a half uh, one of those folding tables with the um, white plastic top not very expensive but it is great because my chair actually rolls underneath it so the chair is out of the way when I'm walking around in my craft room I want to show you also how I have my color set up I think I've shown this once before but the colors are numbered if you can see that right there the colors are numbered according to this chart and this chart I have placed on my diamond painting and on the back of it is just some of that blue tack right there and I can move it around at different parts on the diamond painting to keep it out of the way of where I'm working so right now I have it right here it's right there and then this is the part of the painting that I'm working on. Now, if you have a large painting, you can roll it up. And that's what I've done here. I've rolled it up and I've used some of these clips to hold it in place. That is just sitting on top of the ridge at the bottom of um, my surface that I'm working on. And that's back here. So let me show you that. That's how I have it working on. This is what I have left to diamond paint right over here. It's not too much. I'm almost there. <laughs> so let me move around here and I'll show you what I've done. And I'll spread this out for you in another little clip here in just a second. But this is the detail of what I've wor been working on. Isn't this gorgeous? This is showing Mary's hands and the beautiful detail here that you get when you get, when you use a large diamond painting, you get a lot more detail. This is Jesus's feet. And from a distance, it's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Look at that. It's going to be really pretty. I have a lot of this black color that's in her dress. And then along the sides here are the lilies. And the name of this, of course, is the Virgin of the Lilies. So the lilies are right here running up the side of the diamond painting. So today I'm going to work on this square. And I'm also going to work on this square. And most of them are black. So I can really make some time doing my... Um, multiple placing with this little cheap <laughs> diamond painting pen. Let me get it here where you can see it. This stainless steel multi-placer. See it right there? And then the wax goes in the end of it there. And you just kind of keep pushing the wax in to keep it even. I can place nine drills in this particular multi-placer and then I can place them right on here nine at a time. So it's really nice that I can multi-place all this black because there is a lot of it and there's a little bit of blue mixed in here that you can't really see but yeah, there's some right there. But um, we'll get a better look at it once I open this up and show you what I've done so far. Here I have the diamond painting uh, laid out on the floor so you can see it. See the stripes of blue going up her dress there? See, you can see them now that we're a little bit farther away. And then there are the lilies over here and over on this side and the edge of her chair right there that I've started working on right there. And then here are her hands, of course, one hand and then Jesus's feet right there. So I'll put a picture of it right here on the screen and you can see what it's supposed to look like when I'm all finished with it. It's a huge painting and I've been working on it diligently um, while I'm here at the house. So I wanted to show you the progress that I've made on this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now I'm wrapping up. I want to show you what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the Highlander sweater. 
This is the Highlander sweater that I published last year and it is just so comfortable. I love it, love it, love it. And honestly, Crystal wanted to model the other version. So I made two versions of the Highlander sweater. They're made exactly the same with different yarns. And this is a, uh, not a variegated yarn. It's just a tonal yarn that comes, it's actually stripey. And I'm okay with stripey if it looks like this. It's not um, too busy and the sleeves actually didn't match, but who cares? <laughs> really care. I like the way it turned out and it's really really comfortable. I usually wear it with a light brown turtleneck and in this weather we're having right now, this is so cold. It was in the teens last night here in Chattanooga. Today it's just going to be in the 30s. That is cold for us and so I'm wearing a heavy sweater today and I hope I um, don't have to go anywhere <laughs> because I don't want to leave the house. It's nice and warm in here. So I wanted to show you that that's the Highlander sweater that I'm wearing and very, very comfortable sweater. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, I noticed this morning when I was putting this on, this is not decreased at all right here. It's a very boxy sweater and I'll stand up and show it to you. This is a boxy sweater. Look at that. There are probably 12 or 16 inches of ease in this sweater. Really big, but it does fall nicely. It does drape nicely because of the stitch pattern. The stitch pattern is not tight. I'm using treble crochets in here, if you can see that. Those are treble crochets. And it, not every row, but interspersed throughout the sweater. And that gives the sweater a lot more drape than it would if it was all double crochet or all half double crochet, something like that. So let me just show you the arms. These are uh, very full right here under the arm. This is huge. I mean, this is probably um, I'd say it's probably 20 inches around, maybe 20. And then I show you how to decrease quickly from the elbow down to the wrist. And that makes the sleeve fit nicely right here. There's no cuff on the sleeve. I'm using a crab stitch around the edges of this sweater. A crab stitch here, the sleeves, and at the bottom as well, there's a crab stitch that runs around the bottom. So there are no special rib stitches on here. The ribs are not here. I didn't use ribs on the, on the wrist. But I do like the way that it decreases down at the wrist and it makes the sweater smaller, much smaller here. So it doesn't give you that sloppy look that it might if it had bell sleeves and a lot of ease. So I try not to combine those too much. And so I brought the sweater sleeve down to a very small, um, measurement right here and all that's in the pattern you can take a look at it there if you are interested in making something with a lot of ease i used a size 4 yarn and it took me about 1300 yards to make this i used a k hook so uh, that'll give you some idea of how much yarn you might need if you want to try one of these uh, the highlander is one of my earlier patterns and i really really like it it's uh, comfortable and i've enjoyed i've worn it twice already this year when the weather got cold, I wore it uh, the first time. And this is, again, I wanted to wear it today because it's just very comfy and very squishy and it hangs nicely. So it gives it a good look if you have on a pair of jeans with it or a skirt. I've even worn it to church with a skirt and boots and it looks just fine. So it's, it's not sloppy, <laughs> but it does have a lot of ease in it. So you might give that a try. Now onto this special, special giveaway. I asked y'all to use a keyword in your comment, and I saw lots of those coming in. I don't know how many people signed up for it, but this is a very special giveaway. This is the Floral Prism Throw Kit from Mary Maxim. I did not, I don't think I bought this on sale. I think I just went out and found one that looked like it might be nice to give away for Advent and for Epiphany. This is a beautiful, beautiful floral throw. The I found out today too when I was looking at the instructions First of all, there are a lot of great photographs in here to show you exactly where you place your hook, where to put your stitch markers, all that. It's very, very well done. And the motifs are actually crocheted together, which is so nice. You don't have a stack of motifs at the end and you have to put them all together. They're actually put together as you work. Now, let me show you uh, the colors that I used. I, I was allowed to uh, select colors and so I selected this as the join thread or the join yarn. I really like this color. The color is cottonwood and again this is 
Mary Maxim Best Value. This is very, very soft. And as I said, I think it's a little softer than Red Heart Super Saver, probably priced very similar to that. It's a size four yarn. The Prism yarn is a size three yarn. This is the yarn that you use to actually make the florals or the, the, the flowers in the, in the throw. This is called Sunset. Isn't that gorgeous? And I had a lot of people say they really liked this. And look at the colors in there. Just gorgeous. And then when you pair it with a very nice neutral, it makes the throw look so much more beautiful. I really love this. This is roving yarn. If you haven't worked with roving yarn before, you might give this a try. I had that upside down. <laughs> I do like this beautiful, beautiful yarn. And so there's plenty of this to make the throw in there as well as the neutral um, the neutral color that you combine it with to make the throw. So I think it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. This is the kit. It comes in the zippered bag with the handle. I'm really excited to give this away. It is not a cheap gift. It is so super nice. I really love this this throw. It's so beautiful. And you may see this again sometime. I don't know. But whoever wins that, I hope they send me a picture after they crochet it, and that, that'll take a while. It's not something you could do overnight, but it is very beautiful. I'm, I'm sure once you get going on these motifs, you can make them fairly quickly because there's a lot of space in there. Um, I really like it. I really do, and that's why I ordered it. I wanted to do a giveaway for Epiphany, and this just seemed like a really nice project to give away. So I'm giving this to someone who used the word prism in your comment, and that was on my Christmas show, which was a couple weeks ago. And let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins this beautiful Mary Maxim kit. Here we are at the computer, and I have the URL from the Christmas show right there, the word PRISM in there. So we're going to move ahead and see how many people signed up for this particular giveaway and that was 393 oh my thank you all for participating in this beautiful giveaway i really like this giveaway this is one of my favorites a mary maxim kit let's find out who wins the floral prism throw from mary maxim so here we go crystal got crystal got and there's the word prism in her comment so crystal you have won the Mary Maxim Floral Prism Throw Kit. Congratulations. Well, congratulations to Crystal Gott. Crystal, you have won the Floral Prism Throw from Mary Maxim and from On The Hook Crochet. I was not sponsored by Mary Maxim. I bought this on my own, so I hope you enjoy it. That's my Christmas present to you, and thank you all for participating. Y'all are the best subscribers on YouTube. I just love y'all. Y'all write the most beautiful comments on my videos. I just love to read them. They're so beautiful. Thank you so much for participating in all my giveaways. I do try to do a giveaway every single show because it's just more fun when you do that. And then on Monday we have uh, a giveaway as well and some gifts to give out and I will uh, be back on Monday. It will be the 10th of January. And I have a giveaway from last Monday that we will um, choose the winner for on Monday and then I'll have another one to go out again. So. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching my channel. It's been a great 2021. Uh, I've really enjoyed being on YouTube. It is a lot of work. It's like a job, but I enjoy it. It's so much fun. And I love to create, so I've been creating all along. I'm an Etsy shop. It's doing very, very well. And y'all are supporting that so beautifully. I will say that my bags, my new project bags, will be in in another week or so it's been christmas and so a lot of people were off work and i just wanted to let y'all know that um, there were some people that wanted to be signed up for bags and i really can't do that i'll just put them out there and i'll announce it on a video i won't put them out until the announcement goes out and then you can go and order a bag if you want one. I know a lot of people were disappointed because I only had a few bags to begin with. But I just wanted to see if y'all liked them. And apparently you do. So I will be getting those in in another week or so. And I want to say happy, happy new year to everyone for 2022. Merry Christmas from 2021. I hope you had a great Christmas with your family. And look forward to an even better year this year in 2022. Your new resolution might be just to have a great year whatever that takes just make a great have a great year 
And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to put out a lot of lists and things that I'm going to make and all that because I am, as I said, I'm all over the place. So I'll just have a great year this year and hopefully our family will be blessed and we'll, everybody will be healthy and well. This will be a great year for us. So I hope you do the same. And Happy New Year again from On The Hook Crochet. And join me next time. And that will be on Monday the 10th. Join me next time to find out what's on the hook.